Hi, I'm Bobo. In this week's recap, Hong Kong stocks sank further, with the Hang Seng Index sliding below 15,000 points, the lowest it's been since October 2022. This downturn followed recent turmoil over the potential introduction of a capital gains tax in the city. Less than a week ago, Financial Secretary Paul Chan Mo Po made it clear that Hong Kong was not in a position to implement a capital gains tax at the moment. Despite this clarification, market sentiment remained weak. Gearing up for next month's financial budget announcement, the market is holding its breath in anticipation of new measures that might be introduced to boost the economy. Faced with continuous market downturn, pro-business parties have urged the government to scrap all spicy property cooling measures. In particular, Lo Man Tung, a former vice chairman of the All-China Federation of Returned Overseas Chinese, implored the government to drop the outdated measures to build market confidence and questioned the government's commitment to bolstering the property market. Amid an uncertain market outlook, the prevailing wait-and-see attitude further intensified, leading to a drop in second-hand market transactions. Over the weekend, Hong Kong's four biggest real estate agencies recorded four to seven deals for the city's top 10 blue chip housing estates. That's a six-week low. Trading may improve before the Chinese New Year or the announcement of the financial budget. Buyers remained cautious when entering the market, and homes with significant price reductions continued to be the most attractive. In fact, some homeowners were willing to lower their prices, even if it meant exiting the market at a loss. Let's explore three cases where this happened. Our first case comes from a lower floor unit in Block 1 of Yoho Town, measuring 393 square feet. The two-bedroom apartment, initially listed in October of last year for 6 million Hong Kong dollars, saw its price reduced several times to 5 million Hong Kong dollars due to a stagnant market. After price negotiations, it was further discounted by 380,000 Hong Kong dollars, or 7%, bringing the final selling price down to 4.62 million Hong Kong dollars, which amounts to more than 11,700 Hong Kong dollars per square foot. The new owner, a first-time home buyer, purchased the unit due to its convenient location and close proximity to the Yunlong MTR station and shopping malls. The original owner purchased the flat at the end of 2019 for 5.7 million Hong Kong dollars. After holding the property for about four years, they booked a loss of 1.08 million Hong Kong dollars, with the value having depreciated by almost 19%. Prices fell even further at Garden Rivera, where a two-bedroom unit was sold for under 3 million Hong Kong dollars, marking a seven-year low for the development. This was a renovated middle floor unit in Block C, measuring 269 square feet in size. Originally listed for sale at 3 million Hong Kong dollars, the price of the flat was reduced several times by a total of 170,000 Hong Kong dollars. It eventually sold for 2.83 million Hong Kong dollars, which is about 10,000 Hong Kong dollars per square foot. That's about 20% lower than the project's recent average per square foot price of 13,000 Hong Kong dollars. The original owner bought the flat in 2013 for 2.96 million Hong Kong dollars and held it for about 11 years, losing 130,000 Hong Kong dollars. Homeowners in Hong Kong Island also exited the market at a loss. At Phoenix Court in Mid-Level Central, a three-bedroom unit measuring 1,119 square feet had been on the market for quite some time. Initially listed for 19.9 million Hong Kong dollars, the original owner reduced it by 3.12 million Hong Kong dollars, a decrease of over 15%. The flat eventually sold for 16.78 million Hong Kong dollars, including a parking space, at nearly 15,000 Hong Kong dollars per square foot. A resident of the same district, the new buyer bought the flat for its convenient location, which is close to the Wan Chai MTR station. The original owner bought the flat in 2017 for 18 million Hong Kong dollars, with one car parking space included. Holding the flat for nearly seven years, they booked a loss of 1.22 million Hong Kong dollars. Amid a market downturn, property developers are also selling new projects at low prices. For example, last week, the developer Country Garden slashed prices by 30% for the Allegro project in Kowloon City to attract more buyers. The newest price list features 30 units, ranging from open plan to two bedroom units, measuring between 213 to 414 square feet in size. 
After applying the maximum discount of 21%, the prices range from 3.79 million Hong Kong dollars to 7.82 million Hong Kong dollars. The resulting discounted price per square foot falls between about 16,000 Hong Kong dollars and 18,000 Hong Kong dollars, at an average price per square foot of nearly 17,700 Hong Kong dollars. The project was first launched in 2022, with the first batch consisting of 50 units priced at 24,520 Hong Kong dollars per square foot on average. The new price list reflects a reduction of nearly 28%. So far, about 70 units have been sold, which comprises nearly 37% of the total 190 units in the project. It's worth noting that price reductions don't always succeed in drawing buyers. For example, home prices at High Park 1 in Hung Shui Q were reduced by more than 14%. Nonetheless, during the project's second sales phase of 125 units last week, the market was so subdued that only 4 units were sold. Three more units were sold by the end of the week. These were one to two bedroom units, and they generated over 12.74 million Hong Kong dollars for the project. Over the weekend, no new projects were launched, and the main focus was on leftover inventory. A total of 24 transactions were recorded. Aside from High Park 1, a new price list was also released for Park Yoho Napoli, which saw a substantial price reduction of over 20%. This development also sold three units, all of which were 487 square foot, two bedroom flats, generating 19.74 million Hong Kong dollars in sales. For more information on the secondhand market, stay till the end of this video for this week's recap of secondhand transactions across each district. That's all for this episode. See you in the next.